Once I got the news yesterday, obviously I was, uh, wasn't in great nick, but I obviously went, off, well, went home um, yesterday and had a good think about a few things and um, chased down all the facts and what, where I was at and what exactly was the problem. And um, yeah, it was all pretty hard, but um, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. That's the, that's the bottom line. It's something that um, you know, I can't help. It's, it's been a problem for a while now and I've been lucky enough to get through as much as I have. And, uh, I was hoping it wasn't coming to this. I was hoping that I, I, I had more control over it, but uh, as I said, it is what it is. Did you give some serious consideration to trying to come back again? Uh, yep, absolutely. I, I, uh, I nearly blew my head up yesterday, thinking, um, you know, there's got to be a way I can I can get past this again. I've done it before. Uh, but then the other side of my head was saying, um, last time was a struggle. Potentially, I'm, you know, it was four to five months, probably minimum, before. I could probably run again. Um, I'm going to be 36 by then, and uh, yeah, it was it was, it was just uh, you know, end of the day, it was just going to be too hard for me. And by then, um, you know, getting back in your side was probably I thought I think it was going to be impossible as well with the guys that we got here and they're coming through. Um, and I just I yeah, mentally I just don't think I, I couldn't. After speaking to my wife as well, and she saw what I went through in the last last what I've just finished, and and she said you can't get through that again. So, but I definitely thought about it. I, you know, giving up, giving up. Well, not giving up, but making the decision I have hasn't been easy because I, I love doing what I do. One of your great strengths is bowling in English conditions. How much do you think you'll be missed in this team in this series? Oh, when am I going to be missed? I don't know if I am. Uh, you know, I love, obviously I love to be to be bowling in these conditions, but you know, I, personally, I don't, I don't think I was going to play the first probably two tests at least anyway. The guys that played today and, and, and Chuck and Mitch Johnson in there, I think they were the guys that were going to start in my mind, but. Um, I think, you know, um, yeah, as I said, the guys we've got in there are going to do the job. They, they're, good, they're good in any conditions. So um, I'm going to miss bowling these conditions, personally. But from a team perspective, um, we've got the guys that we've got now, or when we had, uh, are going to do just as, as, as good a job. Can you stay around and offer them advice on how to get the best out of English? Uh, I'm, I'm being lucky enough to be able to stay around for, for, for a few weeks. So I'm there if they want to talk about it. I'm not going to go to them and, and approach this. The bowling coach there to do that. I'm just going to be there if they want to bounce ideas off me, absolutely. But um, as I said, I think the guys, um, you know, Starkey's played in these conditions. He's, he's played in the last Ashes here. He played in uh, played for Yorkshire. Um, Hazelwood's had a good bowl, you know, here and, and got better, I thought. And, and Mitch has played here as well. So um, I'd say there's some pretty good experience behind uh, the guys that are going to be involved. Right. What was it like telling your teammates that the most difficult things? Uh, yeah. I, I, I thought I, I thought I had it covered to be honest this morning when I got there I, I played out in the mind obviously I had a 50 minute bus trip on the way here and I played out in my mind what I was going to say and none of it went to plan I barely <laughs> could talk um, that that would be that, that would that would be the hardest one of the hardest things I've had to do um, you know when it comes to my career and that sort of stuff um, you know play, obviously the playing part is to me very important but the, I think the, obviously what most people are saying I think when they get to this stage the, the, the part you miss most are the guys that you play with and I tried to like I said I tried to say to the guys this morning you know um, they're, they're you know, obviously that's part of the reason why you play the game you know when you go out in the field you've got blokes behind you you know when you come in the rooms the guys that aren't playing they're all behind you, the coaching staff are behind you and that's the part I think I'm going to miss the most and um, it, that's probably what makes me well obviously as I said I love playing but that's the sad part. Are you able to give us any more information on the actual details of the injury and what it was? Uh, yeah I mean roughly um, you know, I've, I've cracked my, I think, as far as I know, I've cracked the tibia. There's a crack in the tibia. I've got a little part in the top of the shin that's um, basically worked, well, worn away, where there's a little hole at the top of the tibia, which has caused the crack. Obviously, just from the bone on bone, um, uh, wearing and, you know, wearing away. Um, you know, um, I, I've had pain in this area before, um, which, you know, had, I had it, you know, I, you know I stood in front of the press last week in Kent and so I was playing five tests. It wasn't that sore then. Um, it was the next day I think I jagged. So I felt something in one of the balls and I just thought it was normal, just something clicking. It, it's obviously knocked something that's uh, come to this and the pain I've had in it, um, I had partly in that game and before I tried to bowl out here was, was, was terrible and I knew something wasn't right. Um, but obviously that's the reason why. So uh, I do need I do need surgery to, to fix that. I think I need a bone graft to get some bone in there and to fix that. So you know that's what I've been told. I've never had that done before. It's a slow process, um, you know, which obviously 
important point him into this, to this decision. Ryan, you spent so long playing through various types of pain and probably going through barriers more so than just about any fast bowler in, in, in a lot of years. How did, how, did you, how did you keep doing it or how did you keep doing it? Well, to, to play with this bloke and the boys in the change room. And, and, to, and to, to wear that baggy green mat, there's, there's no doubt behind that. And as I said, I tried and tried and tried to think of a way to get around it yesterday to keep doing that, but that's what kept me going. The carrot, the, the, the thing was, the hard thing for me was getting through the last four months was, was tough, and I knew that. But knowing at the, at the end was this carrot to play in the ashes, was, it just kept me going, and that's as simple as that. We all bowl in pain. Um, you know, I've just had a problem in my knee. It was, it was sore, but everyone bowls in pain. And there's no bowl that walks out there. I've, just, I've said that many a time, but the carrot of playing for... For Australia and, and um, oh, a, anyone in this position has probably sat here before and said it many times, but you, you want to do it for the rest of your life. You know, it's just not possible. But um, yeah, just you know, wanting to do it and, and, and playing with the, the guys that I've played with just makes it all. You know, I've, I've, I've said it to you a number of times, especially you. It's the best job in the world. You know, um, but you know, that, it is what it is. Right. Uh, had such a wonderful career, but injuries have taken their toll at times. Because part of you think, you know, what if if not for the injuries? In terms of the way you might be remembered. I hate being referred to as Ryan Harris injury prone. I hate that. <laughs> um, but that's that's just what it is. And uh, what if what if I had have looked after myself probably a bit better? I could have played earlier. I didn't. That's all. That's all here, safe. Um, no, nah, look, I, I, I haven't thought that at all. I've just I, I, I said it in my my comments earlier. I played 27 tests for Australia. I, that's 27 more than I thought I was going to play. I always thought if I was a chance to play for Australia, it was one day cricket. And eventually, 2020 cricket, um, you know, 27 tests. It's it's not enough in my mind, and but it, it's 27 tests. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think if I had a, if I had to sit there and if I sit there and think about that, I'd drive myself mad. But um, I'm very happy. Well, that's very disappointing. I, I, I'm very happy with what I've done and, and what I've achieved, what I've achieved. But the level you've played at in those 27 tests has been extremely high, and, and you, you had a specialty of coming in and being able to hit your top level. Immediately, was that something? Did you feel like, um, you know, did you feel that level of quality every time you came back? You were almost on the uh, That's just my job. <laughs> I just love doing my job, and that's that was what it was. Um, when, when when Michael asked me to bowl, I'd, I'd bowl. And it wasn't always um, easy to do it, but um, yeah, that that's that was my job, and I always made sure I trained hard to be able to do that, and worked really hard at doing that, as we all do. So, Michael, what was your reaction when Brian told you he was retiring? How much would you miss him? Yeah, everyone in that change room will miss him a lot. Um, oh, look, I think there's probably there's two sides to it, isn't there? Obviously, I've said through my career that he's my number one pick bowler in any team I've played with. Um, every time I've asked him to uh, to do a job, he's done it. If I asked him to run through a brick wall for me and for this team, I think he'd have a crack at it. Uh, he's always worn his heart on his sleeve. He's always given his best to uh, not just not just Australian cricket, but Queensland, South Australia. Every team he's played with, um, he loves winning as much as I do, and that's a great uh, it's a great trait to have. So there's no doubt we'll miss him. Um, but as I said to Rhino this morning, I think it's really important for us to um, to celebrate what has been an amazing career. He says 27 tests. To me, it's felt like 100. I don't remember playing a test match without him. You know, that's how fond my memories are of, of how great a bowler he's been. His statistics speak for themselves. He's as good as anyone to play for Australia. Um, yeah, and like I say, I really hope that, um, well, us as players, Australian public in particular, and I hope the media really celebrate what has been a, an amazing career. At what point, you, Ryan? Sorry. At what point yesterday, Ryan? Did you find out about the news, and was it a bit of a sleepless night last night, knowing yeah. you'd have to tell your teammates? We tried to have a couple of beers to put me to sleep, it didn't work. <laughs> um, well, I obviously headed to London yesterday for some a CT scan after the previous day. It was a previous. I didn't know what day it was for an MRI. Um, Oh, I couldn't even tell you what time I found out. It was halfway through the day, basically. I got home and, and we were just waited for the scans to hit um, uh, the surgeon that I've been seeing in Melbourne, David Young, his computer, and for him to look it over and uh, the radiologist reports. And, and I, and I, uh, he, he called Alex, Alex Contouris and I went down and took the phone call and he just explained to me, look, it's, it wasn't good, wasn't good news. Um, and, and went on to elaborate a bit on that. Um, he didn't say, you know, as many words that I should retire. But he said it was going to be very hard. Uh, it wasn't great after that phone call. But sitting talking to to 
uh, Dr. Bruckner and, and, and Alex, um, they, they gave me some, some pretty good advice and, you know, part of the words retire was, was used and the word retire and it was a word I didn't want to hear, but deep down I think I knew it was coming. Ryan, you've spoken about sort of desire maybe to get into coaching afterwards. Like, is there anything sort of that, that might be there for you after uh, nothing there at the moment. I'm, I'm I've obviously very raw at the moment. I've, I've got to work all that out. I've, I'm pretty well. Once, once I, I think the time I've spent here without getting in the way of the boys and because they've got a big series coming up and starting on Wednesday, I'll, I'll sort of try and take as much in as possible as I can from Darren, which I've done, and which I do normally anyway, and the rest of the coaching staff. Uh, probably more what happens off the field when when the boys are out there, how to prepare stuff, and that, you know without without. Get, you know, getting as I said, getting too much involved, and, and just sort of observe from a, from afar and, and try and get that information, and then hopefully, um, you know, I've spoken to Phil Jakes this morning, the Queensland coach, and he said, look, I'm welcome there to, to get in and, and do what I need to do. I'll sit down with him when I get home and, and and speak to him exactly what I sort of want and whether that fits with him in Queensland. Um, if not, come to my academy, buddy. I'll let and you. then I can do that as well. So I've got plenty there. So I have got plenty there as well. So um, yeah, look, it's it's all up in the air. I've I've got a lot to learn to, as a coach now, and 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 um, it's not something that because I've played Test cricket and, and played at an international level, I'm a I'm a I'm a you know quali fully qualified coach. There's a lot to learn. Uh, the bits and pieces I've done, I've learned a lot, but it's very different. So. Um, I'll, that'll be all worked out, um, you know, over the next few weeks, if not longer. I've got to have this surgery as well, which is going to put me off my feet for, um, you know, maybe two months, uh, hopefully minimum two months. So, um, yeah, so we'll, we'll work all that when we get home. Right, right cool. Danny's discussion with the, the doctor and Alex sort of focus on quality of life stuff. Now, the fact now they've got a little boy that comes into things. Yeah, yeah. So that was something I never. I always when when Alex sort of put that to me, I always used and the doc. Yeah, I always just say you you worry about putting me on the park. I'll worry about that later. Um, David Young did mention that to me as well, and as as as, as well as um, Alex and, and Peter Bruckner, and uh, yeah, it, when they sort of the way they explained it and the way the situation was with the bone and everything, it, it made me think, and that was part of my, obviously my thoughts last night about wanting to be able to run around with Carter and 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 hopefully a, you know, a couple more kids that we may we may want to have, but walk around the golf course is very important as well. Um, I want to be able to do that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to turn into a very large person. Not very large. <laughs> so I want to be able to uh, I want to be able to do that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, it was it was definitely in my thought. Which again, that, that was at the front of my mind rather than being at the back. And 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 uh, yeah, so that that was part obviously played a part of the decision I made. One of my teammates said today that they used to measure in the nets and you was always pretty hard on yourself. You were trying to bowl a perfect ball every delivery. Was that Alistair Cook ball in Perth? Was that it? Yeah, they only took. 25 years to bowl. And 15, but that, 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 that's it. Not, I mean, you know, it, not not so much that ball. That was that was just that was just a lucky ball. You, just, you know, that, that lands in the right spot, hits the right spot, and swings away, which doesn't usually happen before it passes the batter. But um, I, I, I was always I'm always hard on my size. Like I said, high standards for myself, and um, you know, bowling my line and length is what I do best. Uh, and I always <clears throat> always try and limit. You know, or tried to limit. Error balls and, and balls that went for. I hated going for runs. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I was always a hard marker, but I'd be surprised if you walk into that dressing room and tweak to the bowls, they'd be all pretty similar. Watch every Ashes moment live. And this is like the days of Lillian Thompson. Oh, how about it? How about it? Buy your live pass at cricket.com.au slash subscribe.